It's mixed emotions that we're going to offer the Raven herd as an entity. I think it's a really good time in the beef industry right now. I think it's a good time to sell and give somebody else the next opportunity. From the initial start, we always had an end game. We wanted to build a herd from scratch. And now that I sit where I am now, I probably wish that I'd started off with the opportunity we're about to offer, a whole herd. But Penny and I like challenges, so we've we built a herd from scratch. And the end game was to build it to create some success. And I guess when the time was right, hand it on to the next benefactor. Yeah, we have put so much blood, sweat and tears into this, but our own sort of work and family commitments just keep changing all the time. And we want to enable our business to be flexible and change with that too, and spend more time with our family. We've got young kids and they're growing up and we need to be in their lives as much as we can. Our business structure is, is evolving. We would like to grow our business in acreage. And the truth is the level of input that our staff has been given from Penny and myself that can't be sustained if we grow our business in acreage and I think it would be a terrible shame for us to take the finger off the pulse and let the stud sort of go backwards or go to a lower level so whilst we've got it on a high and I feel very proud that we've, we're selling it as a, a real fantastic group of cows, we want that opportunity to be offered to someone else. Ideally, offered as a whole so that whoever is successful at purchasing the operation, they're able to turn the key on and start tomorrow. What's on offer? 37 limousin breeding cows with June, July calves at foot. Three limousine donor cows, sold dry and open ready to breed. 26 first calving limousine heifers, sold with their June, July calves at foot. 30 AI bred 2020 replacement heifers. 35 2020 drop limousine bulls, earmarked for the 2022 sale. And 21 June drop embryo calves. On top of that, we've got our semen inventory, our embryo inventory, and I guess not to mention the embryo calves that will be coming through. In addition to that, the sale comes with Raven name, the Raven prefix. We've got a Raven functioning website, Raven Facebook page with 2,000 plus followers, our Raven data set with all the data that we've ever collected from conception. And we have the TSI that the software goes in that works at yard side. It's the whole kit and caboodle, and it's really the opportunity that in hindsight, I wish that I had when we were starting out. Firstly, we'll speak about the Crystal family line. The two Crystal females we purchased from the Mandayan herd was the first physical registered animals that we had purchased. We selected two heifers that were bred very similar. They both went back to an original cow called Ramorni Crystal L21. The Crystal line throughout Australia is known for their maternal abilities. Over the course of time, we've sold some Crystals off. Notable ones have been Crystal Horizon H756, she was junior champion at Adelaide Royal Show. She went on to the Limousin National Show and Sale where she came reserve senior champion. So the crystals that we've got today, descendants from those two original crystals and they've left a legacy of really good females. They're probably a little bit larger in frame, long length of body, plenty of milk, very good docility. And as I mentioned, they're probably more of the maternal line.
So the Wonder family line has become one of the mainstay cow family lines in our herd in recent years. It's based around a female that we bought as a heifer back in 2010, Mandayan Wonder D1093, and she contributed to the herd in her own right year in, year out. In those early years, we decided to actually put her into the donor program. She was selected because at that point she was a middle-aged cow. She was still very structurally sound, had very good feet and legs, perfect udder structure and still to this day at age 13 giving embryos as a donor cow. She's still very mobile. She's also got that added bone that we like about her. And you only have to look at, I guess in recent years, the embryo calves that she's left who are beautiful bodied, real deep sided, to have some thickness to them, some bone. They've got really good capacity and have that structural correctness that we like in that original old D cow. The cow line that I'm particularly proud of is the ribbon family line. They're the biggest family line that we've currently got. It started from that initial investment in genetics from the Hunt Limers and Herd in Nebraska. Ribbon was one of the five cows that we originally selected out of that Hunt Herd to flush. The ribbon cow at the time when we were flushing, she was the number one cow in the States or in North America for ribeye area or in Australia we call eye muscle area. Now I actually looked her up the other day, so that original investment was back in 2010. She's still in the top 1% for ribeye area in the States today. That was coupled with positive fat as well as high IMF or marbling, which from a carcass standpoint, kind of the perfect cow. On top of that, incredible growth and very good docility. From that original purchase, we ended up with three key cows being J349, J248 and J148. And then they've left their legacy with their own progeny. And they've also done really well in their own right in that J349, for instance, we've seen a bull out of her go to start in WA. The 148 lineage also went to the same start in WA several years later. So they're cattle that are, are really functional, very commercial focused, very industry focused, uh, market focused, and also our fellow limbers and breeders also value them for what they offer. Uh, to their herds. Next is the Pearl family line. The Pearls come from the original Kensal Black Limousine herd we bought embryos out of. When we were selecting embryos to buy right at that conception of Raven, out of that Kensal dispersal, we had quite a number of embryos marked down out of U151. That cow, Kensal Pearl U151, she topped the sale at that dispersal for $20,000. And obviously the embryos sold after her selling for $20,000, so the embryos were really hot property and at the time didn't secure any. And we were fortunate to actually have the opportunity to buy that cow a couple years later from the herd that bought her originally and we put her straight into our donor program and harvested embryos which we have now descendants from her today. The pearls that we have here are all from U151. She had incredible length of body, beautiful front end to her, very long fronted which was inlaid into a smooth shoulder, real wedgy. She started off like the point of an arrow but was quite wide if you look at her from the rear. Perfect foundation for what we were wanting to build. The other really good thing about the Pearl family line are outcross to a lot of our American genetics, creating you know, something new. Jam Time. This is a family line that we created. Jam Time comes from the Pearl lineage, crossing that Pearl line with the North American genetics with HC Final Time on her grandfather's side. Her sire is Raven Time, who has Ramoni Jill T10, which again, most limbers and breeders would know for really easy keeping, good skin and hair type, positive fat, good functional cattle. Jam Time's created that. She epitomizes a Jill in that she's got that great skin and hair type, probably a little bit more British looking some might say, but she's very modern in her look. Got that muscling that we come to love with Limousin, but she's got that ability to 
have that softness and fat cover. A super deep body, real depth of hindquarter to her, a heap of milk in her, um, and that's passed on through her daughters. She entered the donor program about the same time the old Wonder Cow D1093 entered the donor program. And it's been those two cows that we've carried forward with in recent years. And again, if you go into the pregnancy tested heifers that are calving this season, you'll find jam times and wonders, and, and a lot of them. Last but not least is the Selena family line. It's only a small family, it's pure limousine family line. And it has actually been created out of our Limflex breeding program. So Limflex being limousine cross Angus. The original purebred Selena, K68. If you look back in her pedigree, she goes back to a registered Angus cow called Grelunga Selena Z19. So K68 is a purebred limousine female. She exhibits all the things that we love about limousine cattle. So now we've got this Selena family line that I believe is actually the perfect example of where we're actually needing to head for Australian limousines. So the Selenas, they're really known for their marbling, positive fat, docility, good carcass, plenty of hindquarter to them. Got that real softness, doability and meat eating quality that the Angus bring to the table as well. Selena K68, she's a cow in her own right. We've seen heifers that we've sold at our sale for 11 and a half grand. They were only eight months old. We've also imported bulls to China. One of Selena K68's recent progeny is a bull Q682. We sold him at last sale and he received one of the top prices for the sale. Prior to sale, we actually collected semen from that bull which we plan to use within herd as we feel that that Selena lineage um, and that bull in particular had a lot to offer our herd going forward. So we've got other family lines that play their role in our herd. They provide opportunity for outcross genetics to inject into those six main family lines. Cows like the Wadley family line. There's also another family line there that we created called the Keeper family line, which started from an original purchase of a Birabi heifer. We purchased a cow from Maryvale that is, is a tremendous body cow, and she's now leaving daughters that I think will create their own family line in due time. They play important roles, and, and I suspect going forward, you'll see new family lines pop up. Within those six mainstays, these will have a real impact in our mainstay family lines. This sale is going to be an incredible opportunity. We started from zero with embryos and then a couple heifers and built from up. If I had my time again, if I was able to walk in and purchase a herd and hit the ground running, that's what I would do. It's been a hard slog. We're very proud of where we've come and the herd we've built. But I guess whoever takes it on knows that a lot of the hard work has already been done for you and then there's opportunity to progress further as well.